Hey, I'm back. Uh, I, I wanted to loop back around. You probably saw this sitting in the background, uh, and I'll splice this in with the other section, but uh, you'll see that the lighting is drastically different. Things have changed uh, because uh, I, I got a little out of sequence and I had to backtrack. But um, I, I'm talking about my original wing, and uh, this is about 30, uh, yeah, it's about 30 inches here, and then Here's the bolt where my elevon would attach, right here. A little pin would go through here. This is the tip one. There's one more rib out here, and um, uh, the uh, it was a different arrangement out here. But uh, this is a set, this area was essentially operating at, at a Reynolds number about 500,000 because I had a, uh, a six or an eight inch extension. Let me put it up here to see if I can remember. Yeah, it must have been about eight inches or so. That was a long time ago, mid 80s, and I'm trying to remember what the dimensions were. So uh, this is uh, how it was set up, and by the time you added six or eight inches back here, uh, you're up to a cord size that is uh, large enough to hit the 500,000 Reynolds number. And, and you may notice something here uh, uh, on how the ribs fold up like this and how they're attached to the spar. And if you've ever seen an uh, ATOS or an Atos being uh, disassembled or assembled, um, it, it, it'll look very familiar to you because the ribs are done essentially the same way. The ribs have some uh, vertical bracing in them here, uh, but they attach to the spar the same way. And uh, they don't have the attachment at the trailing edge because they use spoilers, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, I had the pleasure recently of uh, visiting with Patrick from uh, AIR, the folks that make the Atos. He was here in the United States to do some repairs, and he came and looked at some of my stuff, uh, and he was very kind. He's, he has watched all my videos. It's amazing. He practically has them memorized. Uh, he's watched them all multiple times because he does all the uh, repair work and all the production work at AIR. He builds them, he repairs them, and he's very interested in these types of aircraft. And uh, he is self-taught, but very savvy on aerodynamics and structures. And uh, <laughs> we remarked how similar the current rigid wings are to what I did back in the mid-80s, in that the solutions that work are a very narrow set. There might be only one way to do something. It's the only thing that's going to work on this type of aircraft. You get driven into a design corner, and the space that you have to work with is very small. So all of the gliders end up highly similar in many areas. And you'll notice that, I'll put up a picture here of the Millennium. Millennium's got a very similar setup. Now Steve Morris, when he designed the Millennium, lived near me and he came to visit uh, once or twice, I think. And I didn't think too much of it at a time. But he ends up with the same solution. He's got ribs that fold like this, and he's got an elevon that attaches to the trailing edge. It's just kind of how you end up solving this problem. Uh, but Patrick was very kind. He says, he said, my goodness, he says, he says, when did you design this? And I said, well, the design was actually done in like 83, 84. And he says, you were like 25 years ahead of your time. And I says, yeah, probably. And, and we all sat there shocked for a minute about how this design is where everybody ended up. And it turned out to be very predictive of the future. It's not that people came and copied directly, but you see something like this and you go, oh, if I want a semi-rigid wing with a performance of a nice rigid D-tube and something that folds up to transfer, well, this is where you end up. Uh, and I just happened to be the first one that did it this way and got it to fly. Um, mostly, except for that darn stall spin problem. But I just thought you'd be interested in seeing that and seeing how it worked out and seeing how this basic concept of designing a, a flying wing foot launch glider has uh, evolved into what we have today, um, with the exception of the Swift. So we'll put that down here in the pseudo junk pile, but I would never throw that way. Despite its ugly nature, it's uh, a nice keepsake.